Hello, and welcome to this Win Automation tutorial on loops. On many occasions, you will find yourself having to repeat part of a task over and over. You may think that the easiest way to repeat an automated task, say 100 times, would be to run it over again manually. But this method is very inefficient, both in terms of execution as well as development time. In Win Automation, the recommended way to perform any kind of repetitive tasks or process that needs to be repeated in Win Automation is to use the loop actions. These actions can be used to repeat an entire process or a block of actions within it. There are three types of loops in Win Automation. The simple loop action allows you to repeat a set of actions for a given number of times. Let's say that for illustration purposes, you need to create a text file consisting of 100 lines. To write any text to a file, you need to use the Write Text to File action. Enter the file path and a single line of text to be appended. Now, to repeat this action 100 times and get the desired result, you need to use the Loop action. Drag the action within the loop and then specify a counter, the starting value, the ending value, and the value by which the counter increments. By starting the counter at 1 and incrementing it by 1 to get to 100, the loop will repeat 100 times. You can see here that we dragged in the loop action, but the end loop action has also been added. This is because all loop actions come in pairs, and the actions that get repeated are the ones that are contained within that pair. So, to repeat the Write Text to File action, you need to drag over the End Loop action to include it. Notice that the action within the loop has been indented. By running the process in the Process Designer, you get a visual clue of how the loop works. As you can see, the action gets repeated over and over again until it completes 100 loops. You might have noticed earlier that the Loop action creates a variable to hold the value of the counter. And as you can see in the Variables pane, the value of the loop index variable is displayed, as it changes to reflect the loop counter value. As soon as the value becomes 100, the loop will end and the process will stop running. The loop action can be useful in many cases. For instance, in this example process, you can include it in the Write Text to File action to the line number for each line of the text file. Now when you run the process again, the resulting file will look like this. The second type of loop is the loop condition action. This is used when you wish to repeat a set of actions for as long as a condition is true. Most times this is used when you do not know the number of repetitions in advance, but the number depends on a condition met in the process. To see how this works, let's start again with an example. In this example, the goal is to create a date stamped folder for every day within a time period specified by the user. Start by adding a Display Select Date dialog action, and type in a message to prompt the user to select two dates, which the process will store as two variables, named Start Date and Finish Date. Then use the Loop Condition action and configure it to run the loop for as long as the start date is smaller or equal to the finish date to create a new folder for each iteration. For this example, within this loop, three actions are needed. Start by converting the start date value into a format that can be used to name the new folder afterwards. The second action should actually create the new folder using the name generated by the previous action. And finally, the third action should increment the start date variable by one day. So the start date variable will start from an initial value set by the user, and in every iteration of the loop, it will move to the next day. The loop will continue until the start date reaches the date stored in the finish date variable. You can watch the whole process by running the process. In this example, we are prompted to enter two dates, the start date and the finish date, and we can watch the actions as they are being executed. As the process executes, the start date increases by one day in each iteration, and when it exceeds the finish date, the loop ends. The last example of a loop is the for each loop. To use the for each loop, you must already have a list or a data table of items that the loop can then go through one by one. To show how it works, you can use the get subfolders in folder action to get a list of all the folders that were created by the previous loop. Now you can go through each of the folders and append their name in a new Excel spreadsheet. 
To do this, it is best to use the Write to Excel action and keep Current Item as the value to be written. This concludes how to use loops in Win Automation. In the next tutorial, we are going to cover the conditionals. Thanks for watching.